Gabe, good morning. Morning. I'm glad you're here, and uh, I believe we're going to have a good time. Uh, we uh, are investigating the theme of is it well or wellness in the inaugural season of Door Church Connect and the various aspects of overall wellness that really do uh, impact people's lives in a uh, great way. And uh, I think uh, that this has some very exciting and some very needed and relevant implications. Well, I can't think of a more exciting podcast than this one, so I think it's... uh... It's a good topic for us. Yeah. And so what I thought, first of all, today, since uh, we haven't uh, spoken in complete detail yet, to just tell you that uh, it's probably time to fasten your seatbelt because (laughs) uh, we're going to talk about something amazingly wonderful, uh, something that's priceless, and uh, something grandiose when it comes to human beings, but also something simple enough that even a child can grasp. So I'm hoping that I've piqued your interest a little bit here. Well, as long as we're not trying to like define the universe, I think I can jump in on this. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't reached... Uh, Carl Sagan uh, (laughs) level yet. Uh, I just stick to the Bible. But I want to talk about uh, today the human soul. There you go. Okay. Your soul, my soul, the soul of everyone today that is listening. And that it went, uh, I was reading that when it comes to Uh, This aspect of the soul and wellness, Uh, one of, I call him the gurus uh, of all of this, is a man by the name of Dallas uh, Willard, who uh, wrote a number of books. He passed away in 2013, but here's uh, the big idea that he presented. He said, our soul is like a stream of water which gives strength, direction, and harmony to every other area of life. When that stream is as it should be, we are constantly refreshed and exuberant in all we do because our soul is then profusely rooted in the vastness of God and his kingdom, including nature. And all else within us is enlivened and directed by that stream. Therefore, we are in harmony with God, reality, and the rest of human nature and nature at large. And so that's a a big idea that that stream uh, flowing in every human being whether they know it or not is their soul and uh, it challenged me how that it enlivens it uh, it uh, causes people to be exuberant in in ways that uh, maybe they haven't thought about the thing that struck me is he referred to nature and uh you know i don't want to he's a bit of a contemplative uh individual and i don't want to go off the rails here but uh anyone who's been outside in nature in any way knows that uh there it, it impacts their soul they feel something uh deep uh, inside that maybe they can't uh, enunciate, but uh, I believe that we're on to something very, very important here. Yeah, okay, I'll bite, because it, it does make sense in one way, and in many ways, the biblical inquiry, is it well? I mean, the first question in the Bible ever asked is God asking Adam, where are you? And that's not a geographical question, or God wasn't 
liberally asking the question because he didn't know, but it was internal. Something inside of him had changed. So God is saying to Adam, where are you? He's addressing not the man's body, but he's addressing his soul. The famous hymn, Is It Well? Uh, the first lyrics are, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And then it goes into the refrain, it is well with my soul. So it's clear that the question, is it well, or wellness, the focus is always on the soul uh, before anything else. Yeah, and uh, so when God asked Adam that question, where are you? Uh, this was not hide and seek. Right. Uh, something had happened, something had changed. And so uh, I believe uh, that uh, today we're going to be swimming in the deep end of the pool uh, because there's no question that uh, the word soul is one of the most important words uh, in the Bible. And that when we ask, uh, is it well? When we ask, how are you doing? We're not just talking about always the superficial stuff uh, on uh, the the top of the waters we're talking about you know how are you doing uh, on the inside where it really counts and where it really matters and uh, this is why the idea or the belief in the human soul is uh, pretty ubiquitous because uh, uh, everyone down through the ages and when I say everyone I'm generalizing of course but generally speaking uh, most people at most times in most places in most ages have believed that human beings have a soul that that's one of the things that uh, is the distinction about human beings that there's something deeper there's something more profound and uh, people instinctively know that, hey, this really matters. They just don't know how. And uh, I believe that when we talk about the soul, people are, uh, just to start, they're not really sure what it means. Right. It, the, the word has been definitely appropriated into so many areas of life and language. It's entered into the cultural ethos, almost like Xerox, where it, it loses its meaning because we use it a lot in a, in a lot of the wrong ways. And so, you know, there's a ton of different ways that soul is in uh, our cultural life and language and uh, understanding so uh, you know what comes to mind start us off well if you hear musical artists that up-and-coming singer songwriter and they'll say she has an old soul uh, when someone dies people automatically respond may God rest his soul yeah I, I've seen those clips uh, and uh, I don't you know when someone is uh, you said 19 some of them are 14 and uh, 15 and uh so uh how do you have an old soul uh, <laughs> i'm not exactly uh sure but uh, i think of things like the universal distress signal is sos and what that means in uh, originally it stands for save our souls uh, if there's some kind of accident at uh, sea or uh, in the air, you'll hear people say there were 196 uh, souls uh, on board. Uh, the whole realm, I talked about nature, but the whole realm of beauty and art, uh, people always reference this off of the soul because uh, the, these are things they say that touches them on a deeper level and this is especially true when it comes to music well aretha franklin she qualifies as the queen of soul the greatest genre of music ever made uh soul music 
James Brown. He was a soul man. So, I mean, this expresses this in, 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 a, in a probably a more modern dimension, but it's, it's still at the same level. Yeah, and they're making uh, reference to, uh, you know, something that is uh, beneath. Uh, it's not just the surface. Uh, it's not just uh, uh, meaningless that way. That's why you have, uh, uh, and being a uh, full-time cook in my house, a wannabe uh, connect the dots chef, you have soul food, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a major part of Southern cuisine. And if you research, uh, uh, soul food was named for cooking that began when slaves uh, uh, had to survive on whatever leftovers they were given and to take those and make something uh, hearty or to make something soulful out of them and uh, that legacy lives on uh, and is uh, popular today and that's why i refer to people organizations or corporations who function in a heartless fashion as having no soul soulless and every four years they say this is for the soul of america or Oscar Wilde, speaking of losing your soul, eventually lamented, I was no longer captain of my soul. So the delusion that we are in control of everything, it's, it's seated in the soul. Yeah, and so uh, it is uh, fairly frightening when you uh, hear of people or groups uh, referred to as uh, soulless because it means it's something... Uh, very necessary, something very human uh, is missing. And uh, I, I believe in a lot of ways we're seeing people today live out and manifest uh, almost that soulless uh, quality. And then, uh, you know, on a lighter note, you have the advertisers and the marketers that are always looking for a niche, something to uh, lay hold of. And so they love to refer to their products as uh, soulful. Right. You know, you're not just buying this uh, overpriced uh, bobble, or whatever it might be. No, no, this is something that's uh, going to affect your soul. Right. And I, I think it was... Uh, Kia Motors that has a car they've called the Kia Soul and uh, right now in the market for a car uh, I don't know if uh, that's any good or not but I do know that driving it isn't going to bring you any closer to God unless you have an accident and you step into <laughs> eternity. Well I, I think <laughs> yeah all right we'll leave that there but Hey guys, right now we are with Roman and Mariah Moreno, Frank King, and Loha Unruh, and we're just going to be talking about soul care during COVID-19 uh, on a Zoom meeting. They have a lot of great things to say. Let's get into it. Frank, uh, you had two kids that uh, contracted the virus. How did, uh, what was going through yours and Susan's head? Well, of course, there's always a concern. Anytime you have kids, there's a concern, and one of them is sick then you uh you really get concerned um but uh you know it, it, the thing was encouraging especially with garrett because it went he really went through it went through it a, for a long term and uh, some pretty heavy symptoms uh but i think just how positive he was you know we didn't uh we didn't it was it was, it was interesting after he contracted the virus we ended up seeing a little bit more of him than we had before because we all exercise in the same neighborhood. And, <laughs> and so he changed his routine. So he was doing his exercise the same time we were early morning, usually around sunrise or so. So we'd run into him, you know, every day or every two days and get filled in. Whereas in the past, you know, with his schedule being as busy as it was, we, we probably didn't uh, see him face to face as much. Uh, but it was, uh, it, was, it was, you know, I've never been overly concerned uh, you know, we've, we've, we've gone through enough, I think over 50 years to, uh, uh, to know God's in control of everything and that it's all going to come out. Okay. And especially someone, you know, God's got a call on their life. 
Um, I don't think I ever feared for his life. I felt bad for him when he couldn't taste bacon. I mean, that was, <laughs> a, that was a huge, you know, challenge, but, uh, but that's more just because I love to taste the bacon more than, uh, more than being overly concerned with them. Right. No, we priorities for sure. Um, Roman, uh, what, what are some of the biggest things you and Mariah? So you got the newlywed thing. Now you have the COVID-19 thing. Um, so how, how do those two things collide? Um, well, I would say, um, just kind of seems like it's a challenge after challenge. So it's kind of like it's a, um, you know, and it, a challenge of of first first the church, you know, going on live stream, and then whatever we're doing with that, and staying staying connected with people. That's a that's a challenge, constant challenge. And then you have, and then you have me getting furloughed. And then that was another challenge. And then it just seems like it's just challenge after challenge after challenge, like because of the COVID and on top of all that. So it's like, um, it's just like, we have to, uh, I think we've been, we've just been learning as we go, but I think we have to um, be intentional about enjoying ourselves. And, and uh, we've been, um, we've been kind of uh, getting into more of our hobbies because she does art and I do art. So that's been helping us out um, kind of this time using it as a positive, having more time on our hands to say, you know what, well, let's, let's paint. Cause that's how we relieve stress. That's how she relieves stress. And that's how I relieve stress. So, so that's been a positive out of the quarantine, but yeah, I just kind of feel for me, I have to be intentional or it can be, I can see it over being overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think as, um, personally, as a mother, there's a lot of those kind of questions, especially during this time. Um, I was talking to some of my mom friends and somehow like your focus turns on yourself. And then you, I think, man, I should be able, I should have learned a language or I should have, you know, got up on my photography or something and then somehow God always just turns your focus to your children hmm. and says this is what this is your ministry as a mother right now to bring them up during this time on solid foundation so as adults they can go through their own time on that solid foundation and then you think am I teaching them the right things am I being a good example as my walk with God grown so that they can see that example and it's just every day, it's just those questions. I walk away from the situation this morning with my son thinking, did I do that situation gracefully? And what, what is he taking away? Is he taking away that I just yelled at him? Or was he taking away that I tried to give him grace after that? <laughs> I tried to apologize after that. But it's always just, um, at first, it was like, I haven't grown. I, have, I don't have a hobby. I haven't learned a language. And then talking to... Um, you know, friends and focusing on my children, then you look at your children and go, what have I, how have I helped them grow during this time so that if it happens again, they're more stable in Christ. You know, that sounds super spiritual, but. Mariah, welcome. Um, hey, I'm so sorry I'm late. No worries. Um, the biggest issue, um, I miss people. I miss the people of God. I miss um, you know, just being, having that fellowship and that constant, you know, you don't, you don't know what you have until you lose it type of thing. You're that constant, uh, you know, touch, just a simple hug, a, a hello and seeing people's faces. And that is really hard. But, um, at the same time, it's, it's allowing me to kind of stretch out of my comfort zone and, and communicate on a different level. Nice. So, yeah, okay. communication is what I'm working on. <laughs> All right. How are you dealing with soul care? What are you doing specifically that saying, you know what, this is something that, that my soul needs that I need that I need to do, not just for myself, but out of necessity, right? Just in my your spiritual walk, um, mental health, all that stuff. Um, well for me it's been it's been keeping in touch with the people that God has set. Uh, around me which has been a big 
God set some like Bible thumping, Holy Ghost prayer warriors around me. And so whenever I started to sway or doubt or fear, I could talk to these women, um, older peers, husband, and just talk things through and pray things through. And they always, always led me um, like towards the cross, if you will, because there have been some times where I've been just like afraid or um, I'm doing something wrong or I'm not hearing from God and I'm doing like all kinds of stuff, especially during this time. But because of the people that I can reach out to who, you know, pray over me, who give me specific things to pray for, who can, you know, like, hey, your, your head's a little loose, you know, let's pop it back on the right way and, and give you towards the few. I mean, um, these people have helped me be able to keep going and have given me that dose of God that in a time of like uncertainty, in times of uncertainty, I, I couldn't see. Um, I mean, besides even sometimes even Bible studying and praying on your own, at least for me, sometimes it wasn't, it wasn't hitting all the time. So then reaching, being able to reach out to the people that God had set around me and speak things through and pray with them and have them give me, especially the older women, give me a perspective and a biblical perspective that I never thought of. And then specifically give me things to pray through it was just helps my soul so much that um, for me through this time, it was those, those people that, um, and keeping in contact and reaching out instead of just kind of being by myself that helped take care of me and my soul. The, the funnest thing I can like pinpoint is like cooking. We cook together and we like just just have a ball. So for me, that's good for my soul. <laughs> um, but a lot of times just um, getting into the routine, like Frank was saying, like, uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I have like benefited from being there. You have someone to help you with your routine and Rome is amazing with that. So just, just getting into a routine together and um, like getting better sleep, going to sleep at a decent hour. Um, you know, like before you, before I was married, I actually had a, I, I had a crazy sleep cycle. So uh, having that balance has really helped um you know physically uh, in the soul and everything so um yeah I'm, I'm blessed and you know we pray every morning and so it's kind of like that bond that we go um to take on whatever comes that day um we started off with giving it to god and and that's just like i mean it just makes the whole day so so you're saying adulting is good for your soul what <laughs> Adulting is good for your soul. We're getting an adult yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Having that like discipline, you know, like and and being accountable to someone else, not just yourself, is like a huge thing. So the word soul won't go away. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Uh, so I mean, how do how do we traverse this? Like this kind of a minefield of of just an overused word. Well, I believe it's because at its heart. The soul uh, speaks uh, somehow of uh, eternity. Uh, I read a quote, the author is unknown, who said, no, there are some things we all know, but we don't take them out and look at them very often. We all know that something is eternal, and it ain't houses, and it ain't names, and it ain't earth and it ain't even the stars everybody knows in their bones that something is eternal and that something has to do with human beings and uh, the fact is all of the great writers and philosophers uh, down through history for thousands of years have been telling us uh, that very thing, but somehow people uh, keep losing touch with it or are 
surprised when they uh, are confronted with it. So I guess a good starting point would be to ask, what is the soul, right? Because it's not something you can put under a microscope and study. It's not this tangible object. You can't x-ray it and look at the details. Um, it's not even a scientific word. But, uh, you know, there was a, a scientific experiment that uh, I guess John Penn turned into a movie some years ago called 21 Grams, where a guy thought he actually had the weight of a soul as it left, you know, the human corpse, which was widely ridiculed afterward. But so how do you define the human soul? Well, uh, I think that's uh, a good place to start. Uh, because, uh, number one, it uh, puts to rest the uh, lie or the conflict that uh, the Bible and Christians are somehow anti-science. Uh, if you look at history, one of the fascinating features is to see how many of the most famous and respected scientists were also devout believers in Jesus Christ uh, and uh, believers in the reality and the importance of the soul. So whether you're talking about Sir Isaac Newton, Galileo, Johannes uh, Kepler, you have Louis Pasteur, you have George Washington Carver, just to name a few. And so uh, Christianity is not anti-science, but I would say, and uh, maybe I'm going too far, but I think it's safe to say that science today has become anti-soul. Uh, some are convinced that uh, soul language needs to go. It has no place uh, in the realm of science. There's a philosopher uh, by the name of Owen Flanagan, who says there is uh, no place in science for the notion of a soul. And he actually said, desouling is the primary operation of the scientific uh, image. Now, I don't know what he was referring to with uh, the scientific image, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, the purpose... Uh, uh, I'm not a scientist, but I know enough that the purpose and the primary operation of science is not to desoul people. Right, and it, it emphasizes the fact that this is an ancient Hebraic concept. And to, in order to understand it, you're going to have to go to the Bible. You're going to have to go to the Old Testament and look at where these ideas came from. Yeah, absolutely. And so... When I was thinking about this, uh, is it well with your soul? The book of Genesis opens in chapter 2 by saying, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's a... Uh, powerful statement. Other translations say he became a living being, a living person, a living creature. Uh, someone said that human beings are a combination of dust and glory. Very true. So the idea of the soul certainly isn't a new phenomenon or a modern Western idea or a Catholic concept cooked up in the Middle Ages. In the 5th century B.C., Greek philosophers were thoroughly aware of the concept of the soul. And it was this, they said it was a seat of cognition or virtue or, or where one's morality came from. So Socrates taught Plato. Plato taught Aristotle. Aristotle then would teach Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great would go on to conquer the whole world. So Greek philosophy and the Greek philosophy of the soul, some people want to say that that Hellenized Hebrew theology, like the, the, the Hebrews didn't believe in the concept of the soul until um, you know, the Greeks came in and, and brought their, their concepts with them. So some want to say that, but the only problem is, is that Moses wrote the creation story in Genesis about 800 years before Socrates ever existed. 
So you can't claim to believe the creation story in Genesis without believing in the soul, and you can't believe in the soul without believing Genesis, and here's why. God formed Adam out of the clay of the ground, then he breathed life into his lungs, and he became a living being. So the God that breathed the universe, yes. the galaxies, the solar systems, ecosystems, physical laws into existence, breathed into a clay body, and it became animated. So because a, a part of God came inside him, Adam became an animated human soul. So Jesus in the book of John would breathe on his disciples and say, receive the Holy Spirit. So the breath in his lungs now was in their lungs. So our souls are literally a piece of God himself. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for what amounts to episode one of the subject of the soul Obviously, the subject of the soul is huge, so we're going to do another episode. So join us next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us, guys. See you next time.